Hi, everyone. Good to see you all here. I'm really glad that I get to talk about one of the most popular things for me in language learning area, and that is being systematic in language learning. And this is not because I would personally be a very systematic person in general. I'm not. Many people think I am, but I'm a mess in many things. But I've, I got to see that language learning can really change tremendously if people introduce a bit of system in it. And I think it's not that difficult to introduce a bit of system in your language learning. So I'd like to tell you about this and about my own experience with it and the experience of hundreds of my students where I've seen a really huge change the moment that they started to learn a little bit systematically. Now, before we get to the system itself, I would like to mention two other aspects of language learning which I think are really important. But just before that, maybe a quick um, introduction. My name is Lydia. I'm from Slovakia. I uh, work with languages professionally as a conference interpreter for six years. Uh, that is now a thing of the past because I have another project, and that is language mentoring, where I help people in languages. And this is also why I'm having this talk here, because of having the experience of seeing how it works for other people, too. So in language learning, I think we're all kind of trying to find a shortcut in a way, right? To make it faster, to get the, get the results quicker, uh, with few, less effort. But my question is, is it really possible to find a, a shortcut in language learning. See, for me personally, I, I learn a new language every two years, and I find this time uh, the perfect time to get to a comfortable fluency level where I can use the language comfortably. And I do this by spending about one hour with the language a day. I rarely ever learn more than one hour a day. Now, if I wanted to make it shorter and learn a language in a one year, what would I do? I would double the amount, right? I would learn two hours every day, and I'm, I'm sure I would get to the same result faster. Now, if I wanted to do it in half a year, what would I do? I would learn four hours a day, right? And if I wanted to do it in three months, I would probably be a full-time language learner, eight hours a day, which I personally cannot imagine. But I know there's people out there, and it's impressive if someone can learn a language like that. But this is actually the only shortcut I can imagine in learning a language. I can have a shortcut time-wise, but not really effort-wise, right? Because it just means I will get to the result in a shorter time, but it just means I will have put more effort into it in a more intense way. So when it comes to language learning, I don't believe there is really a shortcut in the amount of effort you need to put into it. And this is not just my idea. I also asked uh, Vlad, who I'm, I'm sure many of you know, uh, he has this really impressive video on YouTube, seen by millions of people, where he speaks in 20 languages in a really amazing accent in all of these languages. And he, he speaks 15 languages really well, eight of them on a C level. Like He's a really experienced polyglot. And I asked him, how long did it take you to learn one of your languages? What was the shortest time? And he told me that in order to get to a very good level in Russian, it took him three months, but he was learning five to eight hours every day. This was for a very specific pur purpose. I think he needed, to, uh, needed a good level of Russian because of university studies or something like that. But this is basically it, right? This is the whole shortcut. You can do it in three months, but if you are prepared to, to put a lot of work into it, because language learning doesn't work like, I don't know, you cannot have a shortcut in just seeing the word once and finding this perfect method of always remembering it forever and being able to use it. I personally need to see the words in different contexts at least, I don't know, seven times, so that I can really know the word and, and be able to use it myself actively. And I need to have spoken many times. So that's the one thing about shortcut in language learning. Just wanted to make that one clear. Now, the second question when it comes to language learning is about the methods. Um, the big question, of course, what is the best method to learn a language? And I will not reiterate what has been said in these conferences before by many speakers. I think we all agree that there is not one universal method to learn a language. Uh, it depends on what you prefer, what type of learner you are, whether you want to, pre want to work with books or you're more of a, a tech-savvy person and you like apps. Like, there are so many possibilities today, especially with the internet. Uh, the opportunities are amazing. But I think there is one thing which is universal when it comes to methods. And it's one question that I always ask my students when they want to learn a language. I always ask them, what do you need the language for? And I, know, I have some students who 
have this situation in their life. They married, so they're Slovaks, and they married um, a Slovak-Hungarian man, and now they have a child together. And they speak together with the husband, they speak together in Slovak, but the husband wants to speak in Hungarian with the child. Okay, this is something that happens a lot in Slovakia. We have a, a huge Hungarian minority. And it's okay for the, for the wife, but she wants to at least understand what's going on. I mean, she wants to know what the father is saying to the child, what the child is replying. So her need to learn this language is to just understand. It's purely passive. And in that case, what I recommend to her is just work with the passive ways of learning a language. You don't need to practice speaking. You don't need to go through the most difficult things in language learning. All you need is a lot of listening and reading input so that you understand. You understand what's going on, right? I mean, she needs to make, make sure she understands the, the word roots and with Hungarian, the endings, obviously. But she doesn't need to give a lot of output in her learning because she just needs to understand. And this works also the other way. For most of us, we want to learn a language in order to speak it. Right? We just don't need to just understand, we want to be able to speak the language. And in that case, what we need to work on a lot and what we need to spend a lot of time with is practicing the output. However, many people take it the wrong way and they think they're learning a language when they are just doing this. Just having an app, maybe, you know, and, and spending five, ten minutes with it a day, having fun, enjoying it, and thinking that's the only thing they have to do in order to speak the language well. And then they are surprised why they don't after a few weeks or months doing it. But they haven't really practiced speaking at all. They haven't found any methods to speak. So this is something I always tell my students and they found it, find it the most revolutionary thing in the world. I find it pretty obvious, stating the obvious there. But I tell them, look, if you want to speak a language well, you'll have to speak a lot. And they go like, ah, so this is why. Uh, after many years at the language school, because of course the average way of, of learning a language is you attend a language course, which is okay, but if that's your only contact with the language and it happens once or twice a week and there's 10 of you or even more, how much of that time have you spent speaking? I mean, not all the lessons are about speaking, so maybe you end up speaking, what, three, four minutes a week? Now that for sure is not enough to learn to speak a language and this is why these people struggle after so many years of attending language courses because they haven't practiced the thing which gets them to the results they want to achieve. So I think this is the universal question in asking about methods. And so if we agree that you will need a bit of patience to learn a language and you will need effective methods that will get you there which are relevant to your goals, then this is, this is the hard part of learning the language, I believe. But the good news is that there are two things which make it a lot easier to get to these two. And first of them is finding ways how to have fun with the language, how to enjoy the learning process. And the second one is finding a system. I believe these two things make it so much easier to learn a language and to spend all the time that is necessary to learn a language and to go through all the methods which are important to achieve our results. Now, as for fun, there are some people, that's a very small minority of people, who get really excited about learning a language, like really excited. And there's many of them sitting in this room right now. I mean, if you love language learning, if it's your hobby, then it, it makes things a lot easier, doesn't it? You don't need to force yourself into it. It's something you like. And many people are actually jealous of polyglots because they say, ah, oh, well, you like it, you enjoy it, so it's easy for you. Now, I, I, actually, I see, this, I see this a lot with polyglot stories. Like the typical polyglot story I, I hear uh, when I meet many of you is um, I had, I don't know, 10, 10, hour, 10 years of that language at school, and it was really boring, and I was bad at it, I didn't like it, but then, for some reason, I needed to learn the language really fast, then I found a way which was more fun, and suddenly it worked, you know? I spent like three, four hours a day with it. I didn't even mind because it was so much fun. And this is where it clicks somehow, and this is how a polyglot is made, I believe. You kind of find your way, you find it amazing, you have results, you're motivated, you learn another language, you test your methods, and next time you know it, you come to one of these events and you have a lot of flags on your, on your name tag, and this, it, it's great if, if it works for some people. 
But there are some people, of course, who are not uh, that lucky to have language learning as a hobby or they haven't found that method yet, which would make them super happy. And that's why they need to apply different principles. Now, just one example of a, of a method which can get you really excited. I, I just have to share this with you because I learned it recently about a friend of mine, Lucas Bigetti, who is not here today, but maybe you know him from other events. He found like the most amazing method to learn Russian, and he did it in this way. He realized he wants to learn Russian, and so he added 500 people on Skype as friends, Russian-speaking people, and 100 of them accepted him, okay? It's a pretty good score, I think, right? One fifth. Now, what he did is he opened a chat window with one of them and wrote hi in Russian, привет. And the person replied, привет, как дела? Like, hi, how are you? Now, Lucas copied this and put it into a chat window with another person. <laughs> and that person replied to the question, say, I'm fine, thank you, how are you? What did Lucas do? Copied it back to the first person. <laughs> And in this way, he had conversations with people, with strangers who didn't even know about it. I mean, how ingenious is that, right? And in the meantime, he was translating everything on Google Translate, and he was making sure he understands what the guys are talking about. <laughs> and after, after a few days, he, he did this for several hours a day because he loved this method. I mean, who wouldn't? This is a great method. And he, he discovered it himself. He invented it, kind of. And, and then he just kept writing and writing, and these things kept repeating themselves. So he understood more and more. He started writing some replies later on. And this is how he got into Russian learning. And since then, he's applied a lot of other methods, but this was the one method that clicked for him. So I, I found it really amazing, and I, I think this must have been the feeling of having the success, you know, with, with the language which you, you thought you would never learn. So anyway, there are people who find fun in language learning, and it's super easy for them then. But then, what do, what do other people do who don't? Well, the result, or the answer, in my, in my opinion, is finding a system. I believe that if you find a system in your learning that kind of helps you get to the results step by step without a lot of effort, because you planned the way in advance, and you just follow these simple steps every day, you don't need to put a lot of effort into deciding what you do and how you do, you just have to think about it at the beginning. So what does it mean to learn with a system, to learn systematically. First of all, you need to think of what you need most. So this is the question of, so what methods will I use? <coughs> do I need to speak the language? Do I need to just understand? Am I, am I okay if I don't write very well? Am I okay if my spelling is not perfect? Like that's my case, for example, for French. Um, my spelling is not that, not, that, not that good. I was always aiming to have a conversation in French. So I, I spent a lot more time practicing speaking than I did writing. And I'm okay with that because I don't need to write in French. I, I, uh, if, I, if I write to someone, they'll, they understand what I want to say anyway. The second thing is how much time are you willing to spend with your language? And this depends, of course, on your possibilities and how motivated you are, how fast you want to do it. I personally recommend spending about one hour a day learning the language. But mostly when people start with it, I say go for 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes, and try to get to one hour. But in my experience, if you put one hour into it a day, you see the results in a few weeks or you know, one, two months, and that, that's what motivates you. That's what keeps you going, seeing these results. If you do it just, you know, you can do it five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, but then it's more difficult to, to see the improvement and, and to have the motivation to continue. Then the next question is, when, you, when do you want to learn? For me personally, I love learning in the morning. This is the best time for me, and mostly if I don't make it in the morning, right after waking up, it's really difficult for me to, to find the time during my day. So I found that the morning is really the best, I try to get one hour in one piece, but of course you can do half an hour here, half an hour there. It depends, it's very, it's very varied. You can, you can adapt it to your, to your personal life and preferences as well. And finally, how do you motivate yourself? What do you, how do you keep yourself motivated? This is an important question because learning a language by yourself, that's, that's the hard thing about it, right? You do it by yourself. There's no one else telling you what to do. You need to decide to do it. And if you don't have a strong motivation or a motivation that you can remind yourself of or that keeps you going, then it's difficult. So at the end of my talk, I'll also give you a few tips of how I motivate myself and what works for most people I know. And hopefully you can get some um, interesting inspiration from that. 
as I mentioned, I, my experience is not based on just my language learning, but also hundreds of other people. Um, with this language mentoring project, I try to help people learn languages by themselves. I always tell them, I will not teach you the language, I will teach you how you learn the language by yourselves. And, and this way I, I can help people learn a language I don't even speak. So they learn Korean or, or um, Italian or Croatian, whatever, whatever other language. Because it's, it's really about finding the system, finding a few methods and just sticking to them for a long enough time. Trying to find the system in it, fun, um, intensive contact and effective methods. That's, that's all it takes, basically. And so I'll show you two examples of the learning plans of some of my students and why I think they are uh, very good examples. So for example, in, the case, in this case, uh, we have uh, priorities. So I always tell people to go for three things to concentrate on in a given period of time in order not to, not to do a little bit of everything and not seeing the result. And so in this case, it would be uh, listening, reading, and speaking as the three priorities. And the methods that this person decided to do was podcasts, TED Talks, and audiobooks for listening, and ebooks for reading, and then having session with a tutor and self-talk, which is a great way too, where you talk to yourself about your everyday life and you get a lot of output, even though you don't get a lot of feedback at that time. And so how many times a week do you want to do it? Well, in this case, it was like five times, 30 minutes, that gets us to two, two and a half hours a week five times 30 minutes again, and let's say two 60-minute sessions, uh, which takes us to seven hours of language learning a week, which I think is a perfect plan. If you get seven hours of language learning, you will definitely see your improvement uh, easily and week after week, because this is, this is how language learning works. I'll show you a more ambitious plan as well. So this one is um, of Paul, who was learning Spanish, and he decided to make speaking his first priority. Um, having a language exchange with someone, self-talk and a paid tutor, so you can combine, of course, various methods. He decided to learn vocabulary with the gold list method, which is very interesting, many of you know it. It's basically writing words in a, in a uh, notebook and rewriting them every two weeks systematically. For grammar, he did some online grammar exercises and listened to podcasts, YouTube, Link, etc., etc. You can see what the plan was at the end of the week so the plan was about almost 12 hours a week. That's pretty ambitious already. That's almost two hours a day. But Paul did great because he was very motivated to learn. And he actually outdid himself in every area. We like to monitor um, our learning in a very specific ways, like using charts. And in this case, so the plan you can see here was about 12 hours. But every single week of, of that uh, learning period, he managed to get more of the language practice. And if you look at, for example, vocabulary was extremely, extremely rich in the amount of time that he spent. And the best thing about this is if you make a plan and you set out the priorities, you will not forget about the most important things. In this case, it would be maybe speaking. So we see speaking is blue. Every single week, uh, Paul got enough speaking practice so that made sure that he would improve his speaking as well. What happens if you don't have a plan is you can easily forget about these more difficult things because you, it's more comfortable to you know, spend more time with Duolingo or Memrise or whatever app you use for fun. But I think you should always ask yourself what is the main goal I want to achieve with the language. And if it is speaking, you should make sure you also have some speaking practice in there. So what are the benefits of learning systematically? Well, first of all, it helps you with your willpower. Now, why do I have a picture of Mark Zuckerberg in here? Uh, probably some of you know that he's famous for always wearing a gray shirt, right? And he has, at home, he has a wardrobe full of gray shirts. And he, has, he says the reason for that is he doesn't want to spend time deciding about stupid little things, such as what am I going to wear? And so he takes the, the gray shirt, which is the same, and that's what he wears. And this applies to language learning as well. I don't want to decide every single day what I'm going to do and whether I'm going to do it. I think this is what takes so much mental energy and it, it just kills the whole motivation. Because let's say you want to learn a new language and you're excited about it and you buy a, an Asimil Hebrew book or a Teach Yourself book and you put it on your bedside table and you're excited in the first days, right? You go like, wow, I want to learn and you spend two hours with it and you're super motivated. But then what happens? The next day you go like, ah, today I'm, I'm a bit tired. 
you know, I'm a bit busy, this is a busy day, so maybe tomorrow. And tomorrow, someone calls you unexpectedly and just, you know, interrupts your plans of learning when you wanted to learn. So if you, if you don't have a plan to learn on specific days or specific parts of the day, if you don't tell yourself, I'm going to spend 20 minutes with this book every day, then most probably there will be more important things coming into your life which will interfere with your plans. So I believe if you, if you make it systematic, that helps your willpower a lot. Because your, your poor thing, you know, poor, poor willpower has to decide every single day if you want to do it. If you have a system, you don't. You just follow the plan. I believe that that helps a lot. The second thing is what I've mentioned already. It helps you with the most difficult things where it's just outside of your comfort zone. You don't really want to practice speaking because you feel like an idiot at the beginning. You cannot say many, many things and, and you stutter and you know how great it feels to say things in another language, but with this language, you're just a beginner. It feels so difficult. But if you have a plan and you say, okay, I'm going to do three sessions of, of speaking every week, then that makes it a lot, a lot easier. So you get to do the more difficult things as well. The third thing is it helps you create time in your daily schedule. So if you're systematic and you say, okay, I need to listen to podcasts let's say, half an hour every day, you will find that time because you want to fulfill that little uh, plan, the little commitment you made to yourself. And so when you go to work, you think, am I going to use this time listening to music or will I put on a podcast? And in this way, you can easily collect these minutes here and there, and by the end of the week, you can easily have 12 hours. You don't even know how you gathered them. The next thing is it keeps you motivated. I think many of you know this, this screen where it shows you a streak in an app. Well, this one is Duolingo. There's other apps as well. It shows you a streak of how many days you manage to learn without a break. And that feels so great, right? And you want to keep it. You don't want to break it, miss one day of learning and get to zero, especially after 465 days. By the way, this is not mine. I have never done, I've never gone that far. I bor borrowed it from a friend. Um, but it's, it's really motivating, so why not motivate yourself with other things as well? Why not say, I will finish this book by the end of the month, you know, it, because if I read four pages every day, this is what will get me to, by the end of, to the end of the book by the end of the month. And this works really well if you motivate yourself with other things, not just apps. Also, I think it makes language learning a bit less intimidating because language learning is scary when you look at how many words you need to learn and you know, what, what topics you need to cover. And at the beginning, you feel you don't know much. So it, it is quite scary, isn't it? But again, breaking it into little steps makes it a lot easier. A lot of um, other polyglots recommend breaking it into semantic groups. So for example, first I want to learn how to order a meal in a restaurant. Then I want to learn how to buy a ticket at the station or something. I personally, that, that has never worked for me, these little semantic um, achievements. Instead, I break it into the time that I spend with the language, because I know if I put enough time into it, I will get to the results finally. So I'm always happy about the achievements I've made regarding the time I had spent. And finally, I think that being systematic in your learning also I think it makes us feel better in general. I see this with so many people. If they start learning systematically, they suddenly feel um, they have more energy or they are more organized, more systematic in other areas of their lives. They suddenly start eating better or sleeping better or they do fitness or whatever. It just motivates you to work on yourself in many other areas. I think this is a great thing about language learning, which we should use to our advantage. And now, as I promised, I will also mention some methods to help you in your learning system to motivate yourself. And these are just some of my favorite ones. There's, of course, many, many others. Obviously, it's difficult to learn a language by yourself. So if you find a learning buddy, someone to learn with, that makes things so much easier, doesn't it? If you have ever tried learning a language with someone else, and that doesn't mean you have to learn even the same language. They can learn a completely different language on a different level. You just need to be in contact and talk about it to someone. Know that if you missed your um, activities and didn't fill your plan, then someone, someone will know about it because that, that makes us more accountable. 
Uh, there are many Facebook groups, there are challenges that you can join. Any, I think any group that you can join to learn with someone or find one person, can be someone at this conference, uh, just make, your, make sure that you are in regular contact to check on each other. I think that helps tremendously in the motivation. The second thing is keeping track of your learning. I showed you the Excel way of keeping track where you, know, you can have charts and you can do that, of course. But you can do it in a very simple way of just having uh, a simple sheet which you, dry, which you draw on a piece of paper or in a calendar and you make sure you note every day what you did with the language. And that is such a wonderful feeling at the end of the month when you look at it and every single column is filled. I think that's really rewarding. And this is what you can be happy about in the language learning process. You don't need to wait to see the language results. You can see the results of doing activities which get you there step by step. Third tip I have for you is make some regular reminders. It can be a post-it note on your computer which will this will be the triggers which will remind you, okay, it's time to learn now. I don't have those because I always learn in the morning, but if you cannot find a regular time in your schedule, I think it's great to have these situations such as when I open my laptop, it reminds me of first doing something with an app or maybe read a blog post uh, in the language I'm learning or something like that. Uh, you can, I mean, there are apps that can, that can uh, remind you of these things that can ring at the time I don't know, every X hours or when, I don't know, when you come home from, uh, from work, etc. cetera. And uh, I think they work really well because again, they help our willpower. I use these a lot for a different thing, not for language learning, but I bought one of these st tables which uh, enable you to work st sitting or standing. So you can, you know, movable desks, I think they're called. And um, I'm always lazy to stand up and, and have spent a few hours standing. So what I do is I have, I have an app which reminds me, stand up now, every day, twice, in the morning and in the afternoon. And I made a commitment to myself that I will only skip that if I have a really good reason. Like, okay, I'm really sick, or I don't know, I, I have a terrible headache or something, which doesn't happen very often. So when, when that comes, I just push the button and the table goes up and I work standing. And I think the most difficult thing about it is the decision to do it. So if you have someone or something remind you of that and make the decision for you, I think that helps a lot. One more thing is giving yourself a deadline in learning a language. Because if we, again, if we buy a book and we say, okay, I'm going to learn from now on forever or until I speak the language perfectly, then that's scary. And if you can make it two months or three months or learn until the end of the year or learn for one year, whatever works for you, I think that makes things, again, a lot easier. There are ways to do um, deadlines in a formal way. For example, if you sign up for a language certificate and you know you will have to do it, and of course it's a certificate on a level higher than you are now, so you need to really work on that uh, before, before the deadline, before the certificate, and that will help you not forget about the language learning, make it a priority in your life, because otherwise, if we forget, then, you know, we're not going to get far with the language learning. And finally, I personally love to find a strong motivation, inner motivation, or, in, uh, sorry, external motivation for learning. And that is, for example, buying a ticket to the country where I want to use the language. This works amazingly for me because I love to travel. So this is a picture of me at the, on the Trans-Siberian Express. I had had it on my bucket list for four or five years, but I didn't speak any Russian. So I decided to spend two years learning Russian first, and then I got the ticket there, and that helped me learn because I knew I'm going to go there in a few weeks or months. So my learning was really very, very intense right before then. And it's so great when you, when you get to the country where you speak the language a little bit. I mean, I think... I would say it's enough to be on a B1 level to enjoy traveling in, the, in, that, in that country fully. And then your language just goes up so quickly because you hear it from all sides and you can use it and you can communicate with people. I love it. I love it so much that I always plan my language learning and trips um, in, in line. So right now I'm learning Swahili. So I'm already thinking of my trip to Kenya and Tanzania next year. And that keeps me really motivated every day. Maybe not every day, like I don't feel like learning every day. But having this thing where I know I already have the ticket or I'm going to go there, uh, that, that helps really a lot. 
And it may not be traveling for you, it may be something else. Um, I don't know, you will buy yourself a book or you will reward yourself in any other way. It can be a negative motivation as well. So there are now websites where you can send money and commit to doing something. And if you don't deliver that, they will send your money to a cause which you really don't want to support, like an extremist party or something like that. Now, that can be motivating too for many people, right? What, whatever, whatever works for you. It, I like the, the, mo the positive motivation a bit more than the negative, but it depends on what you like. So that's basically it. The, I think finding system in your learning is not difficult. It really doesn't take much time, but it can make such a great difference in, in the results. Because this is, this is what's the most difficult thing about learning. It's the self-discipline. It's doing this every day, going through the activities which are not so much fun or so enjoyable in general, but just making yourself do it because we understand that we have to. There is no shortcut. We just have to go there. And I have a wonderful quote for this, which says, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. And supposedly Benjamin Franklin said it, but I guess we don't know that because he supposedly said many things. I mean, everything clever gets attributed to either Einstein or Benjamin Franklin today. But if he did, I totally agree with him. This is so true, not just for language learning, but for, I think, life in general. Um, it's, it's good to plan. You don't, it doesn't need to be very precise, very specific, and you don't even need to keep the plan too well, but just having some direction to go to and, and breaking it into little steps which you can do every day, I think that really works amazingly. So the question for you, are you going to fail in language learning or are you going to plan? I hope you got something useful out of this presentation and if you have any questions or answers, I will be very happy to answer them. Thank you. Hello, Lydia. May, uh, may I ask about um, giving myself the deadline and finding the strong external motivation about learning language? For example, I'm learning Hungarian, and um, I always give myself the deadline, but, um, but I have been self-learning for about three to four years, but my level is just about A0, A1. When I was in Hungary, I, I was very happy, and I got some textbook for the Hungarian language learning, but when I'm back to UK, I've got no motivation at all. Even I got the book, I have my plan, I don't want to do anything because I, I just think I'm too weak to catch my... Um, to, to catch my deadline. So how can I, how can I cope to, uh, my weakness and be motivated <laughs> and be strong again? Okay, thank you very much. Okay. So I think if you, if you don't have a, a real, like real motivation to learn the language, if it's, if it's just like I was there, I wanted to use it a little bit, but I will probably never use the language again, I think it's very difficult to learn a language without that first motivation. Um, by the way, I heard you speak Hungarian. I wouldn't say it was A1. I heard you speak to someone. I don't speak it myself, but it, it looked pretty fluent to me. Uh, so maybe you are just um, not appreciating the, the things you've done so far. But I would say, try, have, you, have you tried it in a like, systematic way, just breaking it into regular time slots that you can spend with the language? I think it all starts with the with the with the main motivation why to learn a language. And I'm not saying that everyone uh, can learn every language in the world. I, I believe that if your motivation for that language is not particularly strong enough, maybe you should think about learning another language if you don't really have a, a reason to, to learn it. And it's just like, it would be nice, but I cannot make myself to, then I wouldn't suggest you struggle for another five years and, and feel bad about it. In that case, I would just suggest you think about maybe choosing an, another language which you have a more a reason to learn and more passion for. Okay, okay, it's just a quick question. I'm not learning a new language, but I learned seven languages in my life, and they're all important languages, and I don't want to lose any of them. I want to maintain all the languages at the same time. But even if I study 20 minutes per each language, that's already more than two hours. That's a lot. So how can you like maintain all these languages in a good system? That's, that's a tricky question, and it gets trickier with the higher number of languages, obviously. What I suggest is always concentrating on no more than two languages. Uh, 
I personally have a main language which I learn, and I spend 80% of my time with that, which is Swahili right now. And I spend about 20% of my time with another language, which for a certain period of time can be one of those which I want to uh, work on. So I don't work on all of my languages all the time because I, I think that's really time consuming. And I don't think it's really necessary to do that every day once you get it to a comfortable fluency level and you keep it there for a few months, given a lot of output. My personal experience is when I, so when I get to this level, of like a very confident B2, I can use the language fluently without any problems, and I can, I can do it for several months, and I have I found friends with whom I talk, you know, I get a lot of uh, output, a lot of exposure. Uh, I, I, I won't lose the language totally. It will become weaker and less active, but the moment I get to the country or I meet someone and we speak for two days, or I mean maybe even two hours, depending on the language, I get back to a level where I feel it's okay. But the, the tricky thing is to get there, and that, that's why I personally learn language for two years. I don't like to learn a little bit of everything, because I think languages are really ungrateful in this. If you don't get them to a comfortable level, you will lose them so quickly. It's, uh, regardless of how much time you spend, you can basically get back almost to zero if you never achieve that level of fluency and being confident in the language. That's my personal opinion. So I would suggest picking one or two languages, working on them, and in another three months, speaking another combination of languages. Um, I, I really like the talk and uh, found this system very interesting. Um, with the hundreds of students you've worked with, I imagine even you, if you set up a fantastic plan, explain this great system, that they still screw up at the beginning, um, face different mistakes. So what are the main mistakes or problems you see when introducing a language system um, and how to address that? Do you mean introducing a language system to a new person or at the beginning of learning? Um, at the beginning of learning a language. That's the trickiest part of learning a language, isn't it? The beginning. Um, at the beginning, I think people should concentrate most of all on finding one resource and working with it mostly, not doing a little bit of everything and working, uh, you know, a little bit on speaking. I mean, you cannot really speak too well if you if you if you're at the very very beginning. So what I what I recommend doing is find one book, preferably. I like working with books or one language course online, and go through it until you get to um, a lower B1 level where you can use more resources, and that's when the fun starts, because you can use almost anything out there and work through it step by step and concentrate on vocabulary and speaking, etc. At the beginning, it's, it's getting this vocabulary actively, and my personal preference is for back translations, so I like to translate from my mother tongue into the foreign language to make sure that these things are really in my active vocabulary, always learning phrases and sentences, never individual words. So we could go into more detail on that, but um, this would briefly be the answer to that. By your experience, what's the best to plan? Um, for example, you said one hour per day. Um, so at this one hour, should we focus just reading? Or we can mix, I don't know, uh, 20 minutes reading, then 20 minutes uh, writing, uh, listening. What's the best for you? Mm -hmm. There is no best way, I think. There are many ways, but I would suggest you do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, because doing something for one hour, if it's just one activity, gets a bit tedious, a bit boring. So, yeah, it's like um, doing reading 20 minutes five, five times a week, maybe, and adding uh, speaking three times a week on top of that, and um, finding vocabulary in those texts that you read, um, let's say, 10 minutes every day at the end of reading. So I suggest uh, making it more varied, because it would be boring. Hey, Lydia, thank you. thanks for your talk. Um, just a quick question regarding mentoring. Do you mentor students in a language that you don't speak yourself sometimes? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank so you. the question is probably how that works, right? <laughs> um, yeah, because I, I, I always make it very clear that I, I cannot teach anyone a language. I, I tried it for 10 years, trust me. I was an English language teacher, and it, I failed miserably. Because the, the problem is that if people people come to you like, okay, you're a good teacher, I'm going to pay you, teach me. We finished before we even started. It's impossible, I cannot teach anyone anything. So I always wanted to make sure that if I, want, if I can help anyone, they need to figure out that they are going to do the work, yeah, they need to learn, and I'm very happy to help them on the way, but they don't need my assistance every single day because you know, they just need to know what they're doing, find a plan and do it. So that's why it, it works for, for any language, basically. 
because it's it's really about the system. It's about how to put work into it, and you can you can apply it not just to language learning, to basically anything. So that's the idea. Thank you very much, Lydia. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.